Hey, this is Full Game Prometheus, guys, giving you another gameplay. Uh, Ultimate Team dra uh, Mutt Drafts, uh, once again, going to be rolling uh, with a brand new team. Actually, going to be using the Arizona Cardinals as my offense and defense. I like the Cardinals offense. I think it's got some really great st great stuff. I don't really care for the defense too much, and you're going to see that um, happening uh, in this gameplay against this really, really good opponent. Uh, so I just want to preface, uh, uh, after the game, I actually pulled this guy's record. He is in, in draft champions. He's ranked 84 in the world. Um, he's got a little bit over 238 wins, um, a ton of uh, draft champions and stuff like that. And you're going to see by the intelligence of this player um, on why this guy is obviously a top 100 player. Um, uh, this is uh, I'm actually using a scheme that I just created. Um, th then this is literally like my first online game with this scheme. So um, I'm going into this without a battle tested scheme. I just have an idea what where I want to go with my reads and where, what I want to do with the ball and stuff like that. Uh, so, um, you know, with draft champions, you're forced to get out of your comfort zone. You can't really spam a particular scheme, but you're going to see this guy actually coming back uh, to, to particular plays on a regular basis and, and making adjustments. So that's what, what happens when you play against really good competition. So uh, this is a mesh concept with basically running back over the top. Actually, I missed the running back because he was playing um, his slot uh, defenders down in the box. It was really messy, messing me up a little bit. Right here is a really good play uh, that I set up. It gives me an opportunity to hit someone with a deep comeback rod. I've also got a seam, but I misread it. Uh, right here, I had actually had that guy right here on the sideline. I also had the, the, the middle open for a touchdown, but uh, I tried to do the, the deep post route. The ball sailed on me. It was actually missed around, um, and it might have been some pressure off the edge, but he actually gets a turnover, and this is going to haunt me the entire game. When you play against good competition, um, you can't make mistakes. you gotta be, you got to be crystal clean. Um, this guy was running a lot of ace shotgun sets, uh, and it's just using just a simple, uh, you know, mesh concept right here with a post and, and uh, with a shot play over the top of it. And he was just taking what I was giving to him. So he was a, he was a really, really smart player uh, <coughs> with this. Um, I was experimenting with the bear defense. Uh, it's got a nice, real bl a good blitz to it. Uh, but uh, I'm just not familiar with the setups, and he was quick hiking me, so that actually had a kind of adjustment. I had to play the seam right here off the left. He throws a bubble, perfect play call in this type of situation. Um, he saw my guys all bunched up. I didn't have a defender out there, uh, so this guy, you know, this guy's a high-level player. He see he could read defenses. He can see mismatches. He can see leverage type of situations. Right here, I actually throw uh, the quick outs uh, with an Ohio concept. Um, and he was playing, as you can see, the slot defender. So that, you know, it's just not typically what you see. Most players use middle, middle linebackers and stuff like this. As you can see, he's switching things up with his user. So he's jumping. Either he was trying to make adjustments and he got stuck on what a user, but uh, he was actually making some, you know, really good. Uh, he's, he's, he's putting his user in really unique positions. So right here, go into the offset formation. Go, uh, go with a, a read option. RPO type play and pick up a first down. First and 10 situation, 2 minutes and 38 seconds. Right here, he hit, finally hit the seam. Uh, he was giving this to me a lot, um, and I wasn't really reading it. I just didn't like how his user was floating in that area. Now he comes down to the box. Good, good run defense. Puts me uh, in, a, in a second and nine uh, situation because he just allows only one yard. And then right here, um, uh, he had everybody manned up. I had nowhere to go with it, so I just got rid of the ball. Uh, live to play another down right here for a third in nine situation He gets a nice block shed outside contain to actually put me in a fourth and nine And I was expecting outside man coverage on the backside Most people don't use deep comeback routes, but I try to incorporate deep comeback routes um, In my gameplay uh, and as a result I'm able to go ahead and get a touchdown to tie things up so a uh, minute 34 seconds left this guy goes on a spread uh, doubles uh, offense uh, and actually, I, I get a nice little block shed right there to go ahead and get him in a second and ten. Now, you can see on the left side, I actually put a guy in a cloud flat and doubled up this guy. And right here, uh, he throws into an interception. I pick it off, and it's go time. I'm in a, I'm in a situation where I can go up by, uh, you know, either milk the clock, try to go ahead and take away his timeouts, not give him a situation. But what happened in that particular play, uh, I had an offsides. So... Because there was an offsides, he got the ball back. He got a second and two. 
and got the ball back right there. So immediately he runs the ball. You know, you know, you know, you got away with one. I don't know how many times people get offsides. It's like one of the rarest penalties out there, outside of like pass interference calls and stuff like that. Just, just a fluky play. So. A play that could have been a, ga a game changer for me uh, actually works out for him. He gets a lucky play right here. I got a SWAT animation to go knock that ball out. That was a perfect read. Man-to-man -man coverage with leverage. Good read right there with the post route. So he's just running this mesh concept uh, perfectly. I have a, a curl flat to the outside. He actually puts his um, uh, tight end on the outside. He puts him on a slant, and then he actually exposes the weakness of the zone with Waller and takes off and falls into the end zone for a touchdown. So from a swing where it could have been me up by possession, now I'm down by possession. He's getting the ball in the second half, so for me to put points on the board is important. He actually went with a massive blitz right there in that type of situation, switched up his defense, and as a result, I could not hit the seam route. I could have got a touchdown right there on that particular play myself. And then I go to basically this out route right here with Hill uh, and get a first down. 15 seconds left. I still got all my timeouts. I'm going to burn them if I, if I have to because I only got time for three plays. I hit the little dragger uh, right here. Go ahead and take another timeout. Nine seconds left. Just need to get a field goal range. So right here I try to go and take the top off the defense. This is something that was not a part of my scheme, but it's a concept that I understand have a post street concept underneath concept uh and then basically look for the for the post the post was taken away but you could see the bounce route with the deep with the uh, the deep out and i'm going to go and get it down and take a timeout and get a field goal you're, gonna, you're not going to realize that how important this field goal is going in the second half um because it's going to be able to put me in range to keep this game in check so he's getting the ball Goes with the spread offense. Basically, he's got a five-wide situation. I, I don't necessarily have uh, any particular defense that I want to run against five-wide. Throws right. I had a cloud flat out there, uh, basically a squat flat, and nothing happens. Now he actually goes with the run play. Fortunately for me, I'm able to go tackle him um, because that could have been a touchdown uh, in that type of situation. He's, he's doing this tight set with a trips formation off to the right. Back to the run again. Uh, he actually runs into basically my, my, off, my defensive line, only picks up four yards. Now he's uh, to doubles formation, weak, uh, and basically does an outside run. Mostert uh, was basically destroying me. This guy, I was having a hell of a time trying to stop this guy. He would just run to the outside and just catch my defensive, uh, my defensive players all flat-footed. So right here, I go back into the Bear defense. I try to use a really aggressive blitz, and he just uh, roll, runs it up uh, up inside right here uh, and gets uh, basically a yard or so. And then he goes back to the outside, and you can see the blocking is just, just perfect for him. He's able to go and put it in the end zone. So I'm down by 11 points in this type of situation. I need to score quickly. Uh, I streak up my tight end. I didn't even read it. That wasn't actually an easy completion. I come back. To, I was looking off to the left. I, uh, the tight end was wide open. Now uh, he's got man coverages across the board. Look at this misthrown ball. My guy was wide open. He had he complete leverage on it. The ball just gets misthrown. And that's one of those problems when you play draft champions. You're going to get a couple of misthrown balls. And you just have to bounce back. Got a deep comeback route, but I actually hit once again the same route. I love this mesh concept. It's just a really easy play to run um in easy reads now i put a whip on the back side of this dig and the dig actually gets blocked up with hill so hill's 89 speed he's like one of the fastest players in the game on offense uh, so i get it down to the seven yard line once again going with the mesh concept right here i got the ball at the top uh, basically i'm able to hit the hill he splits the defenders and gets the ball into the end zone so i'm feeling pretty good about it now here's a a, a red zone uh offense i'm working on right here I haven't shown this guy uh, this to him at all bar right here, but I actually go ahead and hit him uh, with uh, uh, this little screen pass with the tight end. Perfect down in the red zone. It's very, very glitchy. And then I actually blitz him in this type of situation uh, with the nickel defense. So I'm, I'm looking for something to make this guy make fast decisions to get pressure on him because if he sits in the pocket, he just shreds me. Like, if he has time, he just shreds me. Right here, I actually didn't use her correctly. Uh, just don't, I don't have a really good user on those results. Uh, he throws right in front of me. Third and eight situation. See how smart this guy is. He knows that when it comes to a double A gap, inside inside zones, you usually shred it. 
and make it, you know you can run uh, in the inside and the outside with with a double a gap. So this guy was running on you know first and ten situations and. Uh, he wasn't running in short yardage situations. He's making good decisions. Right here, uh, I was anticipating to come back, and I didn't follow, the, follow that dude because I'm in zones. Back in the double-A gap, I'm just trying to, I'm just struggling. I'm trying to find something to stop this guy, and I had no way to do that. So I start burning timeouts right here. I'm going to stay on the, t on, the, on, the front, uh, on the front side of the two-minute warning. He goes back with another run. I was actually doing a, a sugar blitz, and you can see right here, he actually goes ahead and actually tries to milk the clock against me. So now I jump into a 4-4 split. I'm going to go ahead and put basically my corners into um, into cloud flats. Uh, so I basically have some gap integrity. I've got a bunch of guys attacking the, ga the gaps, and he's just trying to burn the clock against me as much as possible. So he's running. He's pounding the ball on the inside. He's the inside, and right here I'm just burning the clock down. So he takes it down to two minute warning, three minutes uh, or two minutes or a third and goal, and I actually go ahead and get a nice little shot into the gap. And he smartly kicks a field goal. That's not a bad decision because I really haven't had a super efficient office, but I'm in a situation where I need to score a touchdown against this guy. Uh, and basically, if he catches me inbounds, um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using, using a lot of clock. So right here, I go back into uh, basically this, this uh, concept right here and do the, the, with the whip with the dig. But I want you to take a look at his defender. See how he's playing an outside defender? So this guy was starting to read and pick up on my tendencies right here. He comes down and bites that. So I'm paying attention to that. I'm realizing that he might come back to that again. But I don't have... Um, you know, this the ball's off the left. I've got to, if I'm going to come back to that play, I'm going to have to go back off to the right. So once again, what I do is I go ahead and use the mesh concept. High, low, two simple reads. Hill is wide open. I'm going to go and catch that and hit the blockings perfectly. Now I'm going to come back to a play with the anticipation he's going to play that line right there. So you can see how it bites down. Look at the streak right above it. Perfect read. Hit it. Get the ball into the end zone. I. I get into the end zone, and I'm right immediately as I'm getting into the end zone, I'm thinking, I'll leave, I left this guy 40 seconds on the clock and three timeouts. I'm in some serious trouble if I can't get any stops against this guy. So once again, back to the blitz. I'm anticipating he's not going to run the ball in this type of situation just because he basically is not going to do that. So he's doing quick outs as, his, as one of his adjustments to try to go ahead and keep the ball inbounds and not use any kind of stuff. Actually had a double team going over there. Um, he has the crosser, but I didn't actually put a cloud flat out there. And as a rule, I get a lucky break. So 30 seconds left right there. He actually comes back to another quick out. So I'm going to anticipate quick out. So I'm going to start putting up some, some um, cloud flats to the outside um, and basically anticipate he's going to try to keep attacking the sidelines because this guy is his top-level player. He knows what he's doing. And right here, my cloud flat does not play that outside ball. He catches it and gets a first down, burns another another timeout right here in this type of situation. Still got two. He's about 20 yards to be in field goal range. Once again, try to come back with the blitz right here. He checks it down underneath. Um, I don't know why he did that. Uh, he burns another timeout. 17 seconds left. I go with massive zone coverages. Nobody plays the ball correctly. I had an opportunity to go ahead and get interception. Once again, back to the aggressive blitz. I don't want this guy to actually go and do this. And I've got to, I've got to defend the middle of the field and also the running back underneath. I have to go and play that running back. He took this running back and put him in a streak, but he actually hits me right over the top with the, with the tight end and gets himself in the field goal range taking it down uh, to uh, kicking a field goal to win the game. So this guy's ranked uh, 84 of the nation, you know, very good player. Um, I post my loss too, uh, but I just wanted to show you that even with schemes that you don't, you've never used before online, you can actually get up some victories. So once again, thank you for you guys for your support. Until next time.